Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more Falcon 4 BMS. Today we're looking at the AGM-65D Maverick air-to-ground tactical missile. Development of the missile began in 1966 as a replacement for the AGM-12 Bullpup, and it entered service in 1972. Work began on the D variant in 1977, which was first delivered to the USAF in October 1983. It then received initial operating capability in February 1986. The D variant replaced the missile's electro-optical guidance with an imaging infrared or IIR system. By imaging on radiated heat, the IIR is all-weather capable with increased firing range. It also has improved performance in acquiring and tracking the hot engines of vehicles. A reduced smoke rocket engine was also introduced in this model. The AGM-65 is the most widely produced precision-guided missile in the Western world. Our primary mission is to destroy two ZSU-23-4 Shilka self-propelled radar-guided anti-aircraft weapon systems which are escorting a headquarters battalion. As we approach Deer Point 4 over the East Sea, we will bore sight the Mavericks using a friendly destroyer as our reference point. We will then manoeuvre through Steer Points 5 and 6 before turning towards the expected position of the road column at Steer Point 7. First we'll take a closer look at our opponent today, the ZSU-23-4. The acronym ZSU stands for Anti-Aircraft Self-Propelled Mount, with 23 being the bore diameter in millimetres and 4 referring to the number of barrels. It derives its name from the Shilka River in Russia. Afghan soldiers nicknamed it the sewing machine due to the sound of its guns. Development of the ZSU-23 began in 1957 and the vehicle entered service in 1965. The ZSU-23 mounts an armoured turret holding four liquid-cooled 23mm 2A7 autocannons which are linked to an RPK-2 towball radar, NATO designation Gundish. Each autocannon has a cyclic rate of 850 to 1000 rounds per minute, with a combined rate of fire of 3400 to 4000 rounds per minute. The RPK-2 radar operates in the J-band and can detect aircraft at ranges up to 12 miles, but it is sensitive to weather conditions, mainly rain and snow, and has difficulty automatically tracking targets at less than 5 miles in range because of the high angular speeds at close distances. However, the ZSU-23 is a highly effective combination of mobility, heavy firepower and accuracy, and is still regarded as a major threat for low-flying fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters. We will attack the two ZSU-23s with AGM-65D models carried at Stations 3 and 7 in pre-planned delivery mode. For the purposes of this video, we will maintain a constant altitude. Engage the autopilot by setting pitch to altitude hold or alt hold on the miscellaneous panel. Set the throttle to 85% as noted on the RPM gauge. Set master mode to air to ground with the A-G button on the ICP or with F6. To cycle between the missile types loaded and to select AGM-65D, press OSB-6. As the missiles require 3 minutes of gyro spin up before use, power them on now with OSB-7. The maximum power on time is 60 minutes, 30 minutes with video on. Therefore it's advisable to power off the missiles whenever possible. We will set them to automatically power on when we are west of steer point 5. Enter the control page by pressing OSB 5. To cycle the options to west of, press OSB 20. Now to select the desired steer point, press OSB 19, then press OSB 16 for steer point 5. And finally, press OSB2 to enter the desired steer point number.
To select auto power on, press OSB 7. Exit the control page by pressing OSB 5. Note the letter A beside OSB 7, confirming that auto power on has been enabled. Loading of the missiles on their launch rails causes alignment errors between the aircraft sensors and the missiles. It's therefore important to bore sight the missiles either on the ground or in flight, so that the aircraft sensors and the missiles are looking at the same spot. When we are 12 miles from steer point 4, we will use a friendly destroyer to bore sight the missiles. Toggle master mode to navigation with the A-G button on the ICP. Note the distance to steer point 4 at the bottom right of the hood. We are now 12 miles from steer point 4. Set master mode to air to ground. On the left MFD to set the fire control radar or FCR to C mode, press OSB 1 then OSB 8. You may use the FCR to detect the destroyer, adjusting the range with OSB 19 and OSB 20. Select TGP mode with OSB 13, then to select the air to ground sub mode, press OSB 1, then OSB 6. On the right MFD select the weapon page by pressing OSB 14, then OSB 18. Confirm PRE sub mode. Confirm PRE symbology on the hood. To prevent accidental missile firing when bore sighting, set master on to simulate. Not timed out should have disappeared from the SMS and weapon pages. Now uncage the missile with the manual range uncage button which is you by default. Locate the destroyer with the TGP using the radar cursor keys by default the shift arrow keys. To switch to the narrow field of view as indicated by the field of view bracket, press OSB3. To designate the destroyer, centre it and press target management switch or TMS up, which is shift home. Handoff in progress station 3 should appear on the weapon page. Caution. Caution. The handoff fails because the TGP and the weapon line of sight are not yet aligned. The pilot fault list will show an avionic or AV fault, which is TGP handoff fail, and the master caution light will illuminate. Make the weapon page center of interest or SOI by pressing display management switch or DMS down, which is control end by default. Note the outer white border around the weapon page, indicating it is SOI. To adjust field of view, press OSB3. Center the destroyer and then designate it with TMS up. Note that BSGT or bore sight has appeared at OSB20. To bore sight or align the Maverick on station 3, press OSB20. BSGT will momentarily highlight, indicating that the missile seeker and TGP are pointing at the same spot. It's
It's important to break the lock after bore sighting. Break the lock with TMS down, which is shift end. Switch SOI to the TGP and hand off the target with TMS up. Note the C that appears above station 3 to indicate a completed handoff. Four letters can appear above a station. C for complete handoff, I for incomplete handoff, S for slave indicating the missile is not tracking, and T for track mode. Switch to station 7 with the nose wheel steering or NWS button which is shift forward slash and follow the same procedure as previously described to bore sight the Maverick on station 7. To clear the fault warnings, first press the master caution light to clear it, then press the FACK button, then on the left MFD press OSB12 to view the test page, and to clear the fault list press OSB3. As the Mavericks on station 3 and 7 are now bore sighted, we can power them down. Enter the SMS page on the right MFD with OSB 13 and press OSB 7. To reset the system point of interest or SPI, press TMS down or shift end. Select wide FOV on the TGP with OSB3 and cursor 0 with OSB9. Doing so removes the offset delta applied, making it easier to find targets. Toggle master mode to navigation with the A-G button on the ICP. To select ground map mode on the FCR, press OSB1 and OSB6. When close to steer point 6, use the ICP rocker switch to increment the steer point to steer point 7. Change master mode to air to ground. Set master arm to arm. Verify that the Mavericks have been powered on automatically. Select the weapon page on the right MFD. A low bandwidth or LB AAA symbol has appeared on the radar warning receiver or RWR indicating a ZSU-23 search radar has been detected. Both ZSU-23s can be seen on the TGP page which is currently in narrow view and have been handed off to the Mavericks on stations 3 and 7. Each designated target is marked by a circle on the hood with the circles numbered when more than one are present. The numbers indicate the order of the firing sequence. Note that the first target is obscured by the second and the target designation or TD box.
The bracket on the right of the hood is the dynamic launch zone or DLZ. The number at the top is the dynamic launch range and the carrot indicates the target range. As the missiles are hot they will be fired as soon as the weapon release button is pressed. To fire the missiles press the weapon release button twice. Rifle! Rifle! As always, if you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.